The goal of today's lecture is to analyze uh, entanglement using density operators. So let us recall what's entanglement. So suppose we have uh, two interacting quantum systems. with uh, spaces of states V and W. So then, so a joint state of such a system so Psi is going to be a unit vector in the tensor product state. So it's important to remember that general vectors in the tensor product space are not tensor products of two vectors, but rather sums of uh, tensor products. So if we fix bases, so if we have uh, so V1 through Vn, so it's a basis of V, and uh, W1 through Wm is a basis of W, then uh, a general state can be written as uh, a double sum. So I goes from 1 to n, j goes from 1 to m, cij times vi tensor wj. And uh, if psi can be written as uh, a simple tensor product, V tensor with W for some V in V and W in W, then psi is unentangled. But the majority of states uh, in this tensor product space are entangled states. So what we want to understand today is uh, when such um, states are unentangled, and if they are entangled, how far are they from an unentangled state? So, so we want to develop some uh, measure of entanglement. And um, one of uh, the possible approaches uh, is just to try to minimize the number of terms in this sum, right? So if we can uh, reduce this sum to a single tensor product, then we get an unentangled state. Now, can we um, reduce the number of terms here? So in this expression, so the number of summons is uh, n times m summons. So can we do better than this? Uh, it turns that uh, yes, we can. So let us uh, see how this can be done. So let us, uh, as an example, take a two qubit state. So suppose we have uh, psi is, uh, okay, I will not care about normalizing it. Say, suppose it's 0, 0, plus 2, 0, 1, minus 3, 1, 0, and uh, plus uh, 5, 1, 1. Now, so this is a vector in the tensor product of two one qubit states. And here we write it as a sum of four terms. Now, what we can do is uh, we can remember that the tensor product operation is bilinear. And because of this, this allows us to factor things. So this means that we can take and factor out the first zero, right? So we can write this as zero, tensor product with the following thing. So here we have another zero plus uh, two times one. And likewise, here we can factor out the first one bit. 
So we can write one tensor product with uh, negative three times zero plus five times one. And uh, so what we can see here is that we managed to reduce the sum of four terms or four tensor product terms into a sum of two tensor product terms. So this is a very crude approximation to Schmidt decomposition. So Schmidt decomposition does it um, in a better and more canonical way. So let us state our main result. Let psi be a vector in the tensor product space, V tensor W. Then there exists an um, orthonormal set of vectors V1 through Vd in uh, the space V and an orthonormal set W1 through Wd in W such that psi can be written as uh, the sum i goes from 1 to d mu i times vi tensor wi. So here we note that these are not standard basis vectors. So these are just some uh, um, orthonormal sets of vectors and they are not necessarily bases actually. Right. Uh, and here with um, mu i's being real non-negative. Now, so here we point out that in our previous expansion, so we had a double sum. So we have the sum over i and j. And the difference here is that in Schmidt decomposition, we have uh, a single summation. So this means that um, we have pairings between um, vectors from V and vectors from W. And uh, so what uh, is important here is that these sets of vectors are orthonormal. So for example, this decomposition here is also of this kind, right? So we have one vector from uh, V and the matching vector from W. But the um, vectors from uh, the W space here are not uh, perpendicular to each other. So this means that this is not a, the Schmidt decomposition because we don't have orthonormal sets here. All right, so let me make one correction. Well, instead of non-negative, let's say positive. And with this correction, we can uh, call this parameter D the degree of entanglement. Now let's um, look at a couple of examples. So let's um, take the following state that we often consider. 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, plus 1 over square root of 2, 1, 1. So we know that this is uh, an entangled state. And uh, in fact, here we can see that um, this entangled state is in the Schmidt form, right? So because here we have 1 over square root of 2, 0 tensor with 0, plus 1 over square root of 2, 0, 1 tensor with 1. And uh, so here we have two orthonormal bases, one in the first qubit space, the other in the second qubit space, and then we have this uh, paired uh, summation. Um, all right. So if we take something else, so let's take psi, to be the following state. So let's take square root of 0 
zero one plus point zero one times one zero. So again, we can see here that um, this is uh, a two qubit in uh, Schmidt form. So we have two matched orthonormal uh, bases, right? So we have kind of one basis is uh, zero and one, and the second matching basis is one and zero. So what we see is that for this state, d, the degree of entanglement is equal to two, but what we can see from this uh, decomposition that this is almost equal to the state zero one, which is uh, not entangled. So what we can see is uh, from the Schmidt decomposition, we can see that this state is entangled. So the degree of entanglement is equal to two, but nonetheless, it's very close to an unentangled state. Let's give a proof of uh, Schmidt decomposition theorem. So consider the density operator. rho v, which is a trace over w of uh, projection to psi. We know that density operator rho v is self-adjoint which means that it's diagonalizable with the real eigenvalues and moreover we know that uh, the eigenvalues of rho v are non-negative. So with non-negative eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda n. And um, so let's take uh, the eigenvectors. So let v1 through Vn be an orthonormal basis of V of uh, eigen vectors of uh, rho V. We can uh, write psi using the basis uh, of eigenvectors for rho v and uh, in the first component. And then we can use this idea that we can collapse all cofactor of each of these vectors into one single vector. So this means that our state psi can be written as v1 tensor whatever is left over vector w1 plus v n tensor whatever cofactor is w n. So we can um, change a basis in the first component and uh, combine all uh, factors from the second component and to form new vectors w1 through w n. Now let us recalculate the density operator for our state using this presentation. So we know that rho v is equal to trace over w of uh, psi times uh, bra psi. So this, so if we substitute this presentation, so this equals to trace over w of, uh, now we have uh, a double sum, i goes from one to n and j goes from one to n and uh, here we have so vi tensor with uh, wi times uh, vj tensor with uh, wj. And uh, then since we're taking the trace in w, so this equals to the sum 
i and j from 1 to n, we have vi times vj. And here, when we take the trace, we swap the order of these factors. So times a numerical scalar, which is uh, wj, scalar product with wi. But we already know what is rho v. So we know that rho v is diagonalizable in this basis. So, so we know that in this basis, the matrix rho v is diagonal. And uh, so rho v is uh, equal to lambda 1 um, v1 times v1 plus lambda n vn times vn. So this is how a diagonal matrix is uh, written in these notations. And uh, now we compare this presentation with this one, right? So from here, we make the conclusion. So, so this tells us that if i is not equal to j, then this scalar product must be equal to zero. So then wj with wi is equal to zero. And um, so in case when i is equal to j, then uh, wi with wi is equal to lambda i. Now, so this uh, tells us, or this suggests that we should um, separate non-zero eigenvalues with, from zero eigenvalues. So let's uh, assume, let's um, assume that lambda 1 up to lambda d are positive and lambda d plus 1 to lambda n are equal to 0. So, so this will tell us that, uh, so for i greater than d, so this tells us that the scalar product of wi with itself is equal to 0. But that in the Hermitian space can only be when the vector wi is equal to 0. So, so this tells us that actually in um, this uh, sum, we only have d terms because all w's after beyond the i equals d are all equal to 0. So this means that this is in fact equal to w v1 tensor w1 plus vd tensor wd. And the final step that's left to us is to normalize the remaining w's. So we take for i from 1 to d. So we set w i tilde as um, 1 over square root of lambda i of w i. And uh, then this ensures that w i tilde with uh, w i tilde is equal to 1. So now what we see is uh, from this condition, we see that uh, w i's or w i tildes are orthogonal to each other. And uh, because of this normalization, so in fact, um, uh, these vectors become orthonormal. And then we can rewrite this expansion as uh, um, square root of lambda 1 v1 tensor w1 tilde plus square root of lambda d times vd tensor wd tilde. And uh, so these square roots of uh, lambda i's are our values mu i's.
right? And uh, so these are greater than zero, right? So, and what we get is, uh, so we arrive at Schmidt decomposition. So here, the first components form W1 through, V1 through VD form an orthonormal set because uh, this is just the basis of eigenvectors for a self-adjoint operator, rho V. And uh, so then we see that complementary vectors are orthogonal to each other. So this is from our alternative calculation of the density operator. And uh, if we normalize uh, these um, complementary cofactors, then uh, we are going to get the Schmidt decomposition. This completes the proof of Schmidt decomposition theorem. Let us uh, just point out one corollary. So for a state psi in V tensor W, well, we can calculate density matrix rho V and also we can calculate the density matrix with respect to W. So then these two density matrices have the same sets of uh, non-zero eigenvalues. We point out that in principle, these two matrices uh, do not have even the same sizes. So the size uh, of the first matrix is dimension of V and the size of the second matrix is dimension of W. But uh, we claim that uh, if we take non-zero eigenvalues, then uh, these sets will be the same. And the connection here is uh, the Schmidt decomposition. So what we see is that uh, eigenvalues of uh, rho V are the squares of uh, non-zero coefficients in the Schmidt decomposition. And uh, but because of the symmetry, the same applies uh, is to W. So the squares of the coefficients uh, of the Schmidt decomposition are also non-zero eigenvalues uh, for the density operator rho W. So this means that uh, these two operators have the same sets of non-zero eigenvalues. And finally, we remark that uh, again, from Schmidt decomposition, we can uh, tell whether the state is entangled or unentangled. So if the Schmidt decomposition has a single summand, so if D is equal to one, then we have unentangled state. If D is greater than one, then uh, the state is entangled. Now, let us work out one explicit example so let's uh, find the Schmidt decomposition for this uh, two qubit. And uh, well, it's easy to check that uh, this is a unit uh, vector. So we begin by computing the density matrix for the first um, qubit, right? So this is trace in the second qubit of uh, uh, psi times psi. So this is trace of um, what? So we have uh, one over square root of two, zero, zero, plus uh, one half, zero, one, plus one half, one, one, times the um, cat. So we take the transpose, 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, plus 1 half, 0, 1, plus uh, 1 half, 1, 1. Now, when we expand, we get nine terms, but let's see what are non-zero terms. So the trace when we take the trace, we should have matching second components. So we have sec matching components here. So we get one half zero times zero. Then uh, 
we don't have matching components here or here. So now we take this term, so no match here, so we have a match here. So plus one quarter zero times zero. Then we have matching terms here, so we have one quarter zero times one plus no match here, so we have a match here, one quarter <coughs> one times zero and uh, plus one quarter one times one. Right. And uh, so now we can write it as uh, a matrix. So row V, so it's a two by two matrix. So this component corresponds to zero zero term, right? So it transforms a zero vector into zero vector. So here the coefficient is three quarters, so it's the sum of these two. And then we have one quarter coefficient uh, elsewhere. Now, so let us um, check consistency. So what we know is that uh, this matrix must be um, self-adjoint. And for real matrices, self-adjoint means symmetric. And so indeed, here we have a symmetric matrix. And uh, we also know that the trace of this matrix is supposed to be one. And uh, indeed, so this matrix has trace one. All right, so what we need next is we need a basis of eigenvectors for this density operator. And uh, so instead of working with fractions, what we can do is we can take the matrix 3, 1, uh, 1, 1. So rho is one quarter of this. And these two matrices share the um, eigenvectors. So let's calculate uh, eigen vectors for this matrix. So here we can easily write down the characteristic equation. So it's lambda squared minus trace of a matrix times lambda plus determinant of a matrix. And so this is equal to zero. So for this matrix we get lambda squared minus four lambda and determinant is three minus one. So plus two is equal to zero. So here eigenvalues are going to be, so, um, so negative, so here we have uh, two plus minus square root of, uh, well, half of B squared minus the product. So we we'll get four minus two. And uh, so what we see is that the eigenvalues are two plus minus square root of two. So let us find eigenvectors. So we have, uh, so A minus lambda one times identity. So that's uh, the following matrix. It's, um, so three minus uh, lambda one. So it's going to be one minus square root of two, one, one, and uh, here we get um, minus one minus square root of two. Well, one can verify that the product of two diagonal entries is equal to one. So in fact, this is uh, this matrix has rank one. So the rows. Uh, uh, proportional here and uh, so this means that uh, the reduced uh, form of this matrix is going to be one and then minus one minus square root of two and zero zero. So this is the reduced row echelon form and uh, so this tells us that uh, the um, eigenvector v1 is uh, equal to one plus square root of two times zero plus one. So this gives us the first eigenvector for um, this um, density operator rho v. And um, so here 
So the eigenvalue for this is, uh, in fact, this eigenvalue, and we need to divide it by 4 because the matrix is divided by 4. So we have 2 plus square root of 2 divided by 4. And uh, so the trick for the second eigenvalue is, so here we just switch plus to minus at square root of 2. And uh, so we do the same thing here. So v2 is going to be 1 minus square root of 2 times 0 plus 1. So this is the second eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda equals 2 minus square root of 2 over 4. So what we're going to do next is uh, we are going to go from the standard basis uh, vectors to the basis of uh, eigenvectors. So for this reason, we need to express standard basis vectors in terms of v1 and v2. Well, for one of them, it's uh, fairly easy to do because if we take v1 minus v2, then uh, so this is equal to 2 square root of 2 times 0. So this tells us that um, 0 is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 2 times v1 minus v2. And then we can use this expression to express 1. So 1 is equal to v1 minus 1 plus square root of 2 times 0. But for 0 we have this expression, so what we get is v1 minus 1 plus uh, square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 times uh, v1 minus v2. Or, so this becomes, um, so if we bring this uh, together, so this becomes uh, root of 2 minus 1 over 2 square root of 2 v1 plus 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 v2. And uh, so now we expressed standard basis vectors in terms of uh, eigenvectors v1 and v2. Now we switch to the basis of eigenvectors in the first component. So we have psi equals 1 over square root of 2. And so this 0 we replace with uh, this expression here. So times uh, 1 over 2 square root of 2 times um, so v1 minus v2 tensor with 0 plus 1 half and again this 0 is replaced with this expression times 1 over 2 square root of 2 v1 minus v2 tensor with 1 plus 1 half and uh, so here we ex use the expression for 1. So we have so root of 2 minus 1 over 2 square root of 2 times v1 plus root of 2 plus 1 over 2 square root of 2 times v2 and this is tensor with 1. Now let us combine all terms v with v1 in the first tensor factor. So we, we get v1 tensor and so now all the scalars are pushed to the second uh, tensor factor. So here we get 1 quarter 0 plus so here we have uh, 1 over 4 root of 2 times 1. And uh, here we have uh, plus square root of 2 minus 1 over 4 square root of 2 times 1. And likewise, we now take terms with v2 and um, collect 
the cofactors. So plus V2 tensor. So here we have uh, minus one quarter times zero minus one over four root of two here times uh, one and uh, plus square root of two plus one over four root of two times one. So now here we can simplify things a little bit, right? So by combining these two terms, so this becomes V1 tensor one quarter zero. And uh, here, so this minus one will cancel with this and root of two will cancel. So we get plus one quarter of one. And uh, plus V2 tensor with uh, negative one quarter zero. And again, this will cancel, square root of two will cancel, plus one quarter times one. And uh, so what we see here is that these two vectors as predicted become orthogonal to each other, right? So we, here we have a pair of orthogonal vectors. And uh, the last thing to do is uh, to normalize uh, all the vectors uh, uh, involved. So in particular, you see these vectors are not normalized, right? So these are not unit vectors. So they need to be normalized. Now, what is uh, the norm of uh, V1 squared? So this is equal to one plus square root of two squared plus one. So this is um, um, one plus two plus one. So that's four. So this equals four plus um, uh, two square root of two. And the norm of V2 squared, well, we just change the sign here it will be four minus two square root of two. So the normalized vectors will be, so V1 tilde will be one over square root of four plus two square root of two times um, V1. So one plus square root of two, zero plus one. And uh, V2 tilde is one over square root of four minus two square root of two times uh, one minus square root of two, zero plus square root of one. And uh, for W vectors, so the normalized W vectors are, so W1 tilde, is uh, one over square root of two times zero plus one over square root of two times one. And uh, W2 tilde is equal to minus one over square root of two zero plus uh, one over square root of two one. So now we've got two orthonormal basis in uh, the V space and in W space. And uh, then the Schmidt decomposition will be uh, the sum of tensor products of these vectors with coefficients that are square roots of uh, the eigenvalues of the density matrix. So what we get that, uh, so this psi is uh, going to be the following expression. So a square root of two plus uh, square root of two over four times uh, V1 tilde tensor W1 tilde plus the square root of the second eigenvalue one uh, 
2 minus square root of 2 over 4 v1 tilde tensor w1 tilde and uh, so now it's kind of uh, a simple exercise to see that in fact uh, these two expressions are equal so it's just um, simple algebra with square roots of two and uh, so this gives us the Schmidt decomposition so this is the Schmidt decomposition so what we see is that d is equal to 2 and um, so one can verify that the scalar product between v1 and v2 is equal to 0 right so these two vectors are orthogonal to each other and these two vectors are orthogonal to each other and uh, so then we get this uh, Schmidt decomposition form and um, so this is uh, the final presentation for um, this vector. So finally, let us point out a connection between the Schmidt decomposition and uh, the following singular value decomposition. So which is the following theorem. So let A be a rectangular M by N complex matrix. Then there exists there exist unitary n by n matrix U uh, two and uh, m by m matrix u1 and um, um, pseudo diagonal real matrix well, m by n matrix sigma which uh, has uh, the following form. So it's mu1 dot 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 mu d, well, then possibly zeros, so this matrix is um, rectangular, so this means that like this diagonal is um, not exactly the diagonal, it doesn't join the top left corner with bottom right, right. Uh, and, uh, and, and then A, so such that A factors as U1 times sigma times U2, right. So any complex rectangular matrix can be um, uh, written, factored in this form or in other words, so this tells us the following, that if we have a complex rectangular matrix, then we can multiply it by um, a unitary m by m matrix on the left and another unitary n by n matrix on the right, so that the result is uh, this pseudo diagonal matrix, right? And so these mu i's are positive here. And uh, so, Choosing these unitary matrices uh, corresponds to choosing orthonormal bases in um, our vector spaces. And uh, so because A can be thought as a matrix of uh, a linear operator from 
m-dimensional space into n-dimensional space. So essentially what we are doing is we are choosing an orthonormal basis in D and an orthonormal basis in W so that um, when we um, write the matrix of A in this new orthonormal basis, then uh, this uh, matrix becomes uh, of this pseudo-diagonal form. And uh, so this, uh, you can see that there is a close connection with uh, Schmidt decomposition. And in fact, it is possible to derive uh, Schmidt decomposition from uh, the singular, so this is called uh, singular value decomposition of a matrix. So one can derive one from another.